Fishing feels tougher every year. More pressure, fewer quality bites. But a brand new study tested one simple habitat change that flipped the script. They ran it across an entire reservoir and the bass size jumped dramatically. It worked for the test lake and it might be the fastest way to improve your lake too. Now as bass fishermen, we all want to catch more bass and bigger bass. But as our reservoirs age and there's less habitat and cover in them and more people than ever fish them, we get more fishing pressure. It seems like big bass are harder and harder to catch on a lot of lakes. Now state agencies can help by changing regulations and stocking fish, but the research on this is pretty up and down. Sometimes it helps, but basically it seems like cover that habitat, that's really the key to driving it. That's what we're losing in these aging lakes. Grass cover has been shown like hydrilla and milfoil. That really helps with recruitment and growing fish. The problem is a lot of places they kill it out or it just won't grow. So how can you improve the habitat? Well, this study took a look at it and showed a pretty quick way that you can instantly improve the fishing on your lake for bigger fish. So this is a brand new peer-reviewed study. It was done by the University of Illinois, res a team of researchers there, and it was published in December of 2024. To do this study, they looked at two lakes that are very similar in central Illinois. The first one is Walnut Point Lake, and that's where they did the habitat change. That's about 50 acres. And then Lincoln Trail Lake, that's about 130 acres. Nearby, they're both eutrophic, which means older, more fertile type lakes. That's more the greenish, brownish, fertile water. And they also have a very similar uh, structure of bluegill and largemouth. Both the population and the size were very similar. So they took a look at changing Walnut Point Lake and they started this study in 2014 to 2017, they did a monitor phase. They just did nothing. They checked the populations. And then in January of 2018, they changed the habitat and then they monitored both lakes again for four more years. Now the researchers noted that prior research in clearer more or less fertile lakes basically didn't show a lot of correlation between having what's considered coarse woody habitat or basically you know wood cover in a lake adding that and the bass population although they did show in one of the studies that removing that woody habitat actually reduced the amount of prey and changed the size structure so there was taking it out had a negative impact and there was also one study that they looked at in a eutrophic or more fertile lake like like these ones that showed that there was a correlation between bass size and the actual uh, amount of woody habitat. So that gave them hope that basically if you added a lot of woody habitat to this lake, to one of these lakes, you could possibly either increase the amount of prey or the, the bluegill, which are both feeders and prey for bass, or it could give habitat to the bass so they could spawn better, so they would have more food, or maybe they could actually forage better because they like to forage around habitat and they're more structure feeders. As a bass fisherman, we probably can guess that adding woody habitat to a lake probably gonna help, but as they noted in this, it's a pretty complex relationship. On the plus side, as the woody structure breaks down, that adds nutrients to the lake, but this was a fertile eutrophic lake already, so that breakdown, the adding the extra uh, bottom of the food chain type stuff, probably not gonna help a lot. And it is going to give more habitat for young of the year, for prey to get in there, and uh, fingerlings, you know, small bass, so you should get more recruitment. The small ones should be able to grow up. And then bass like to forage around uh, a lot of cover like this, so it should give them, if it collects, say, the food around there, then the bass, instead of having just roam endlessly, they're kind of more stockpiled. They don't have to roam as much. It's less work for them. They can stay put and maybe more efficiently feed. They can grow faster and bigger. But then the flip side is, if you put a lot of cover there, then maybe the little fish that the bass feed on and the bluegill feed on, well, maybe they have less uh, success feeding on them because they're back in that cover. It's too tight and, and too small for them to get in there. Maybe they don't eat as much. So basically there's that trade-off of, we think the extra habitat is gonna be good, 
and they're going to have a higher population or grow faster, but it could work in the opposite direction. So that's why they wanted to check it out. To improve the habitat, what they did on this 50 acre lake is they dropped 1500 trees around it. Pretty much they increased the number of laydowns or that shoreline wood by 12 fold. So you have 12 times the shoreline cover that you had before. There was no offshore grass and stuff on this lake. It was brown and fertile. So this dramatically improved it. Now these were pretty natural lakes, not a lot of shoreline development or anything. So you weren't cutting down uh, homeowners trees. And then also there, you're not talking docks and, and other things like that or other shoreline cover. Basically they dropped these trees and some were big hardwoods. Uh, they said like hickories and, and maples and stuff. Other ones were smaller like cedar trees and stuff, but 1500 trees on a 50 acre lake, that's a lot of habitat instantly added. And then what they did is the four years before and after this study, they checked it from May through October once per month for each of those that total of eight years and looked at the bluegill and the bass populations. To monitor the bass, they used electrofishing in the shallow areas. They did that monthly to check the population, both for the numbers and for the size. And they considered quality bass uh, 12 inches and bigger. So adults, you know, catchable size fish and then more stocker ones are just uh, young of the year, more like eight inch fish. Then they also use nets to look at the bluegill, the size, and the, the numbers and also the spawn, how that was working out. And then they also looked at the bottom of the food chain, like some of the, the plankton, some of the invertebrates, the real small little stuff that young of the year bass and bluegill were feeding on. And they looked around this woody habitat to see if that changed as well. So after the four years, what did they find out? Well, the bottom of the food chain, really, they couldn't noticeably see a difference. The zooplankton, the, the basic uh, bottom of the food chain stuff, they really didn't see any difference in the numbers and then the makeup of different species there. That pretty much, when they added all that woody habitat, that pretty much stayed the same. What about the bluegill though? So the bluegill at the reproduction at the spawn level, there was a huge increase. That was basically, they measured about a threefold increase based on adding the woody cover. The thing was the numbers on the adults actually went down slightly. They measured those from in the nets uh, before the study of seven and a half fish per net per night, basically that went down to about 5.6. So uh, that was a negative uh, correlation. It was statistically significant, but somewhat of a minimal one. But the adult numbers of bluegill went down. The size structure of the bluegill actually went up though. When the numbers went down just a little bit, there were it tended to more towards the adults. You're looking at about 40% of them before were the the bigger or quality sized ones to after this study, you were looking more about 77% of those were the larger size bluegill. And what about the bass? What we're here for, right? Well, the bass, the numbers didn't really change, stayed the same pretty constantly before the study and after the study. What did change? The number of quality fish, the number of fish that were 12 inches or better in this lake, it went from about a quarter of the lake, but it was 26% before they added the habitat. By the end of this study, 53.7 or over half the fish were over 12 inch fish. 5% are dinks, don't want to catch them. After they added the woody habitat, over half the population are catchable size fish. That's a pretty big difference in just four years. So based on this significant increase in the number of quality fish in the lake, the researchers drew a few different conclusions and basically they looked at the fact that those invertebrates and the, the bottom of the food chain didn't change, the number of bluegill at the spawn changed, and then the water clarity, they think all these had factors on why this worked. So let's dive into each of those quickly. Starting with the bottom of the food chain in the zooplankton, what the baby bass and the baby bluegill and stuff are feeding on, basically the bottom of the food chain, it's already rich enough. You already have enough of that. What made a difference was for the bass and the bluegill with the actual habitat. Now they theorized that a couple of things happening at the bottom of the food chain that was helping though, was one more adult bluegill and probably being in better condition was helping them have better spawns. And then the other thing is once the, the bass and the bluegill were spawned, there's more habitat for those young of the year. They can 
avoid predators, but they also don't have as, have to spend as much energy avoiding. They can stay there and feed efficiently, so they're growing faster and converting more of that bottom of the food chain into their own body mass. So that cover helps them grow up quicker and more efficiently. And then for the bass, there are a few things going on there where one, when there's more juvenile bluegill, there's bigger spawns, there's more of those young ones for bass to eat. So bass of intermediate to large sizes, they love eating that. So there's more food source. And then secondly, with the habitat, they thought one of two things. One, it consolidates the prey a little bit more. So they're around that habitat. And then secondly, the bass are efficient at feeding around cover. So you get a couple things. One, it's consolidated, and then two, they're good at it. They don't have to roam as much in open water. They can hang out, search less, and feed more efficiently, so they're spending less energy to get more food. So that's helping the bass feed more and burn less energy doing it. And then the big factor they noted here was the fact that in some of those other studies, that was in the less fertile clear lakes and it really didn't show the the payoff for bass by adding some of the woody cover there although like i said taking it out did kind of hurt the the growth rates as well but you didn't see the instant boost in the darker water like this they noted one in that darker water that's usually because there's not grass cover so there's a lack of cover there but secondly in that muddier water more turbid water bass can't see their prey as well. So in open water, they can't run it down as well as they can in that clear water. So in this muddier water, having the habitat and consolidating that prey right there, it gets them in closer range where the bass is more efficient for sure because instead of trying to track, the, track down prey in open water where they can't see that well, well now they're at close range and at a short distance where they can st still see. So they thought the fact that it was that muddier water, the woody structure becomes even that much more important to attract and, and hold all that prey in a short area where a bass can actually prey on them. So that's why you saw in these eutrophic basically the normal bass lakes where it's more that greenish brownish if there's not grass cover this woody cover is a huge win for the bass now the researchers were quick to point out as well this isn't the be all end all there was more research needed you saw a short term of four year boost but looking at growth rates long term was this just a spike uh what would happen if you did it for a part of a lake versus all the lake but you could, can, you could easily see this as 50 acres. You might not be able to do this on an entire 10,000, 50,000 acre reservoir, but areas where you have parklands and public uh, land on the shore, you could certainly do it for a cove or two and definitely spike the bass populations, the size of those fish in those areas. So this seems like something that's pretty easy to do and these laydowns aren't gonna necessarily rot off really quickly. So you're looking at a, you know, 10 plus year boost to the bass population just by dropping a few uh, trees on the shoreline. Based on this research, it sounds like if you have public lands around a lake that needs a little bit of a boost to habitat, not much grass cover, man, this is a pretty easy way to boost that bass population. Hopefully a few more state agencies will read this study and use it to grow bigger bass. And speaking of bass management, Ever wonder what lake limbs do to the size of the bass? I dove into a study on that, or check out my full science playlist that dives into the science of bass fishing.